L'chaim, L'chaim. Maisa, there's two bottles on this table. It's too much for us, but it's not enough for everyone, you know? So, I'd say, you know, this whole maimid, this whole gathering, this whole get-together has been, as it's been discussed, as it's been explained, it's about one thing, and one thing alone, which is about drawing out that desire, that tefillah, that wanting, that thirst for geula. And I'll tell you the truth, and it's also been mentioned that there is minias, there could be some obstacles along the way that we have to break through, we have to go over. And so I'll tell you something, for me personally, I was a Ferbengus, will be personal. For me personally, to me there's one minia, for me personally. And it's two words. Each, one of, each word by itself is a holy, Jewish, beautiful word. But you put them together, to me it becomes one of the darkest sentences in, uh, in all of language. And that's Eurydice Adairis. Eurydice Adairis. We know there's such a thing, there's such a phenomenon, you can't deny such a thing. That as the generations go on, as we move farther and farther away from Har Sinai, the collective koiches nefesh, the powers of understanding Torah, of pouring one's heart out and davening, they seem to be diminished. And you know, it's an amazing thing, as we get even closer to Mashiach, and we move further and further in into that tekufa that's called, that's defined as ikvaz de Mashiach, then the yirida, the descent, the shrinking of the souls of the generation, it seems to be in the language of Chassidus, I guess, it's shaloi ke'erech. It's not seder hishtal It's not a usual descent from one level to the next, to the next. It, it drops off a cliff. Anyone that's in any position of uh, leadership knows that the generations, you know, that every, every two years is a new generation and it's the Eurydice Adoris that exists is shaloi ke'erech. It's without measure. It doesn't fit the normal pattern of, of just one degree less. And ironically, and ironically, that major task of pushing us over the threshold of Geula is ironically given to the weakest of generations, the generation that compared to the earlier ones is mamish nothing. So to me, that's Akasha. To me, that's Akasha. How do we overcome that? And we have to understand that when, you know, like the Gemara says that before the Rabbani Shalom gave Moshe Rabbeinu the Torah, the Malachim in heaven, the angels in heaven had a kasha, ma'enesh kisiz karenu, what is the human being worth that you should give him such a gift? When the malachim had such a question, that's not just something that happened once upon a time that's recorded in the Gemara and we review it. That's an ongoing question that sometimes plagues the mind of a Jew. Ma'enesh kisiz karenu, what value do you have? How is it possible that such a task that we saw from the video, the Rebbe himself, uh, to, 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 be, to, give, to be given over to Iqus of the Mashiach such a thing, how... How can we handle such a thing? How can, we, how can we make sense of it? All right, so listen, so I'm no one, I'm no one worthy of giving explanations, giving Biurim, but, you know, even in Amar, it's can, like, bump into a truth once in a while, you know, so it's, just, you know, it's not so crazy if what I'm about to say is maybe true. And even if it's not B'teres Tefillah, like we're going to mention, to speak B'teres Tefillah. So it's like this. It's, an, it's not a simple idea, but I'm going to try to package it as concisely and as simply and as quickly as possible. In the writings of the Rishonim, it goes back to Rishonim already, the Ravid in a number of places. It's mentioned in the Zara Kaddish in a few places. In the Basement of the Vilna Goy, in the writings of the Groh Alpi Kabbalah, this is expanded upon in great detail. Is that the Rishonim tell us the tradition is as follows that one of the major Meneas for Gula is not necessarily like a certain date that the Rabbanu Shalom has, okay, this is going to be the date, you know, and so on. There is a requirement, and it's going to sound a little bit funny, there is a requirement for Nishmas Moshe Rabbeinu, for the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu to make its way into the world a certain number of times. And in order for Gula to take place, Nishmas Moshe, the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu, has to be fully unpackaged and fully expressed. And that takes many times. And the Sram talk about this a certain number of times, when I can go into the how many times and so on. In order for Nishmas Maisha to come, Gula, just like Maisha Rabbeinu was the first redeemer, Gula depends on the soul of Maisha Rabbeinu. Now, Maisha Rabbeinu's neshama, that's, that's, a, that's a big neshama, you know? That's, you talked about, you read the Just like the last generation is, 
you know, a drop off a cliff down, Moshe Rabbeinu is not just uh, the highest in Seder Stalshus. Moshe Rabbeinu is, Moshe Rabbeinu is very, very big. And Moshe Rabbeinu's soul has to come down X number of times for Gula to take place. As I mentioned, this is something that we find in many Sfarim. You know, there's a, there's a mice they say from Rav Nachman Haradanka, that he was one of the Talmud of Al Shem. And uh, he, had, he was thinking about making Aliyah, going to Eretz Yisrael. And so he asked his Rebbe, he asked the Baal Shem Tev, And the Baal Shem Tev said, go to the mikveh. Go to the mikveh and an answer will come. So he goes to the mikveh and he dunks into the mikveh. And when he dunks the first time, he sees himself in Yerushalayim. Okay? He dunks again. He sees himself in Beis HaMikdash. He dunks a third time. He's in Kodesh HaKadshim, but there's no Aaron. There's no Aaron. Okay? So he goes back to the Baal Shem. And the Baal Shanta says like this, the Baal Shanta says, you go to Eretz Yisrael, it's fine, you can find the Beis HaMikdash, but the Aaron is in Mezhevish. The Aaron is in Mezhevish. We know that the Baal Shem Tev, the whole Taurus of Baal Shem Tev, as was mentioned, is the Indian of Taurus HaMashiach. The Aaron is that vessel that's Moshe Rabbeinu. Like the Rambam writes in Pirish Mishnayis, that there was only one person that was able to go into Kadesh HaKadjim at will, not Yom Kippur, nothing, just whenever he wanted, that was Moshe Rabbeinu. Mibain shnei hakruvim. It says in Pasuk that the Rabban Shalom speaks to Moshe from between the two cherubs. Mibain shnei hakruvim is Rosh Tevis Moshe. So this idea of Geula being the emergence of Moshe Rabbeinu, as is mentioned by the Zar Kaddish, the Vilna Gain, and so on, this is echoed by the Baal Shem Tev in his language, that his Torah, which is Torah the Mashiach, is the Bechin of the Aaron. So here's the problem, just to make the problem even worse. So if the ultimate task that we have, that we're charged with, is to bring Gula, which means to somehow embody Nishmas Moshe, Saif B'Kasha. Mele, if you're born with a big Neshama, like the Lubavitch Rebbe, you know, or a Tzadik Yisod Olam, in whatever the generation might be. So that, those are big Neshamas. Those are Moshe Rebbeinu Dikin Neshamas. Mele. But... If, for every single one of us to be given that task to bring Gula within ourselves, befratu bechlal, and Gula depends on Nishmas Moshe, how could such a thing be? How could such a thing be? So you read this at Doris, it's one thing if there's a certain quote of mitzvahs, but, but now we're saying that it has to be that you have to literally embody the greatest Neshama of all time of Moshe Rabbeinu. And, by the way, you read this at Doris. So how is that possible? I better not stop now, right? That's like, I have to give an answer. All right, so there's an idea that we find in the Svar Makdashem. It's talked about by the Rashash, the base Medrash of the Svar Dashem Kabbalim. It's expounded upon and unpackaged by the Taras Chacham, Rechaim Dila Rose. In that, in that world, the following idea is said. And it's as follows. There are two categories of neshamas. There's one category of neshamas, which is that every individual neshama has its designated madrega and designated kaychas. And within that category of neshamas, that every single one, every single individual is a designated, designated neshama, you're coming from, you have a, a tremendous amount of chesed, or a tremendous amount of gavur, or a tremendous amount of, of beauty, whatever the midas are, whatever the particular madrega is, that's your, that's your neshama. And within that category, there is the biggest of all, and that's my Rabbeinu. But Seder Hashash has another category of neshamas. And this other category of neshamas, when you look at each and, one, each and every one of them, you know what madrega they have? They have madrega of nothing. Of nothing. Now that's... Who has those neshamas? That's because of Mashiach. That's the generation before Mashiach comes. If you want to identify where, what's your madrega, where are you holding? Nothing. But you know, but here's the irony. The Rashash taught us that that itself which is an unbelievable, maybe weakness, in those neshamas, is its greatest strength. Do you know why? Because it says in Pasuk, Vayiminu ba'ashem Moshe Avdai, that Chazal say, Moshe Rabbeinu is shakul keneged kol Yisrael, that Moshe Rabbeinu equals all 600,000 yidin, which means that there is a way to duplicate nishmas Moshe, and that is by not having your own personal madrega that all you are is nothing but an empty space within which the collective powers of all of Klai Yisrael is able to pool, concentrate, and express itself. And you know what the irony is? 
It's Davka Nishamas that when you identify them and you want to say, like, what's your color? What's your Indian? What's your Madrega? And the answer is, I got nothing. Those are specifically the Nishamas that are custom made to be just pools, to be just places in which the collective energy of Kalah Yisrael is able to manifest. And this is one of the most essential terrorists of, of Chassidus, which is Fabrengen, of Yidin coming together and all of a sudden every single individual person has their limitations and maybe extremely, extreme limitations. But it's because of our own personal nothingness that we're able to do a mitzvah and we can say, the Rabbi Shloilam, who am I? I'm Mamish nothing. But you know who I'm doing this mitzvah on behalf of? You know, who, what, you know what I want to embody. You know what I want to, to, to be activated through me. I am doing this, B'Shem Kol Yisrael, on behalf of all of Kol Yisrael. And we talked about, how we saw from the videos and, and so on, spreading the light and connecting to another Yid and focusing on being mashpia to other Yidin. A hundred million percent, that's, that's, that's everyone's a Christ. But even in a situation of where you're, you're daving your own Shemun Esrei, there is a way of daving your own personal Shemun Esrei, of learning your own Pasuk in Chumash, saying a Perak Tilim, even daving for your own Inyanim, where you say to yourself, Rabbanu Shlalem, I don't have the strength nor the desire to come to you as just me individually. Because me individually, who am I? But Adarab. Because who I am is Mamish nothing. I am able to say, Rabbanu Shloilam, I am emptying myself out of my own personal color, of my own personal madrega, my own personal shayrish, and I am going to act as just a klal, just a way f- through which klal Yisrael can speak to you through me. And all I want to be is nothing but a mouthpiece for the millions of Yidin out there that can't talk to you directly or don't know that they can't talk to you directly. And even the Yidin that can't speak to you directly, I want to just be a, a pool within which Klal Yisrael's energy is able to concentrate. And it's Bodek Menus, it's tested and proven, the Tzaddikim have told us this. That even Yidin, Davke Yidin, who in their own personal Madragas might be extremely limited, but if they embrace an Avedis Hashem that's one of 600,000 Yidin serving their Rabbanu through them, and seeing yourself as just part of that collective whole of Klal Yisrael, and you're able to do that specifically because of the fact that you are completely transparent and translucent and a bechin of ayin and a mamish of nothingness. So the, the, the kaychis that could come out of you and the kaychis that could be manifest through you are shaloi ke'erech, are completely transcendent from the limitations that you might be as an individual person. There is a way, davka, specifically, ironically, it's specifically because of Yudas HaDairus. It's specifically because of the limitations of each one of us as an individual person. It's Davka because of that that we could all collectively be the Maish Rabbeinus and allow that Nakuda of Maish Rabbeinu, that Nakuda of the Raya Mehemna, the trusted shepherd, the, port, the, the Yichidish Abenefesh to express itself by us coming to Rabbanish and saying, Rabbanish, I'm not davening to you because, uh, because of my name and because of who I am, as if I'm an individual person just coming. Rabbanish, I'm coming to you on behalf of all of Kla Yisrael. And it sounds silly, like presumptuous, who are you? The answer is, exactly, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. That's exactly why I'm the perfect person to be the vessel for all of Kla Yisrael to come to you. And the Kaychas and Nefesh, an individual, can, in, can absorb and, be, and transmit even to others is unbelievably, unbelievably, infinitely compounded because of this. And this is exactly what the Aaron is. What's the Aaron? The Aaron is Einam and Amida. We know one of the miracles of the Aaron in the Kodesh HaKadshim is that it didn't take up any space. Like you measured from one side of the room to the other and so on, it didn't take up any physical space. The question is, Mepharsh Yemes, God doesn't do miracles for nothing. Who's noticing that? The Kain Gadol and Kodesh HaKadshim is the only one that goes in once a year and he's not taking measuring sticks. Why would God do this miracle for nothing? The answer is, it's not a miracle. That's what the Aaron is. The Aaron is nothing. And that's exactly, exactly why it's able to be the source of divine light into the world, because it's nothing. Every single one of us, we know our deficiencies, we know our chesroinus. And the Eitzar tells us, because you're chesroinus, because of your deficiencies, who are you to daven? 
Who are you to learn? Who are you to tell other Yidin about Davin and learning? Who are you to give chizik to other Yidin? Who are you to talk about Gula, to talk about Mashiach, to take upon yourself avoid of Afatas Mianis? Who are you? So what's the response of the Yitzhar? The response is, exactly, exactly, exactly. Exactly what Moshe Rabbeinu said to the Malachim. Malachim said, you have all these problems. Moshe Rabbeinu said, exactly, exactly. Because we're nothing, because we're ayin, mamish ayin, because of that, ein saif, infinite, infinite kaiches can pour to the world through us. This is what you find by all the tzaddikim. Everyone talked, everyone talked about this. Even the great Rosh Hashiva of pre-war Europe, you know, Rosh Shimon Shkop in his Akdama to Shari Yosher, he talks about this. He says that the key of Avodah Hashem is what? Is redefining your sense of self, expanding the I of who you are. When a baby is born, a baby's little, what is I? When the baby says I, what does it mean? It means him or her. When it gets a little bit older, what does I mean? It means the family. You get married, it means your wife. Shimon said, a big tzaddik, you know what I means? I means Kal Yisrael. And that could happen in two ways. Either you're given Nishmas Moshe, top of the Everest, or your mom is nothing, and all you are is a pool within which the Kaychas of Kal Yisrael are able to concentrate. Bez Hashem, we shall be saying in our own lives, Mashiach is going to Hashem should manifest in an open and revealed way, Bekarev, Mamish. But the Iker is that a person should have the Moichen of Mashiach, the Moichen of Gul in their own lives. And the Moichen of Mashiach, the Moichen of Gul means to be able to do everything B'Shem Kol Yisrael. Just end off with a quick story. You know, there's a, a Maisa of Yid, very, very quickly, a Maisa of Yid that he once had a lot of problems, a lot of tsaras, whatever it is, you know, a whole peck of stuff. And he went to the Rizhner to get a bracha. And so he had to wait on a long line to get the Rizhner. Eventually he gets the Rizhner. And the Rizhner, you know, he pours his heart out. And the Rizhner says, Eivish is elfin. Hashem should help. Finished. And like that, you know. He was hoping for something a little bit more than that. So he leaves the room. And so one of the sons of the originator saw that this year leaves the Rebbe's office, the Rebbe's study, and his face is down. That's not the way it's supposed to be. So he asked what happened. So the person says, you know, I was hoping for a little bit more than just Abish the Zahelfin. So he goes back. So, the, the, so he says like this, go back to my, go back online, go back to my father and say, Rebbe, what's going to be until the Abish helps? So he goes back in. Okay, it's a good question. So he goes and he goes in. And he says, you know, I came before, and the rabbi gave me a bracha, Abish is elf, and I want to know, what's going to be biz Abish is elf, and what's going to be until that? And the original said, Abish is elf, and biz Abish is elf. So that's not like, you know, pushing him to the side. That's a big bracha. That's a big bracha. To have moichin of Mashiach, to have moichin of Mashiach, and to be able to say to yourself that I embrace that avayda of living b'shem kol Yisrael, of living... Mullard's day session, Kamaim of Chasma, being a little Arun Akaidish, which is Mamish, nothing but through me can be manifest, Mamish ain't safe. That's a life worth living. Hashem shall bless each and every one of us that we shall be Zaycha to experience a Gula Pratis, Bani Chaim Ezaini. But whenever the Rabbani Shalom gives brachas to Yidin, Bani Chaim Ezaini, it's always with his stamp, you know, it's always Be'etzim Elikus. Just packaged in Bani Chaim Ezaini. The Ikir Bracha is that a person should be Zaycha to receive Elokos, to receive the Rabbanu Shalom himself. And the Kalim, the Kalim Shayim, in all sorts of ways with Bani Chaim Ezaini, we shall be Zaycha to experience a Gula Pratis, and, and, and through that, a Gula, a Gula, a Gula Klolis. May be as called Sadiq Barachimim, may every remain Amen.